so this is the second video then on interrupts excluding timer so I went quickly through polling versus interrupt uh, showed you interrupt controller <coughs> I showed you the interrupt vector addresses for the interrupt uh, table um, and the steps I discussed the steps quickly and I showed you how a program will actually execute if it's using interrupts um, we also talked about the different interrupt sources and then I've also told you about this I bit which is the interrupt bit in S reg which is the status register which is your global interrupt enabled bit if that bit is a one you can activate interrupts otherwise you cannot interrupt any act uh, you cannot activate any interrupts in other words um, yeah set the I bit in this uh, special function register uh, the global interrupt is on enable the individual interrupt so yes again just like a normal house if you've got a main switch this is your i bit like the normal switch now this is the normal main switch of a house i'm talking about a, just a uh, comparison so the i bit is the main switch then you must enable individual interrupts in a house if you want to switch on a light circuit you must also if it's on or off it will switch on the lights um, if you want to switch on the plugs it will also switch on plugs there's a specific circuit breaker for each and every uh, device or each and every circuit in your house but there's a main switch and this is like I here is like the main switch so you must still enable individual interrupts so even though if, if I make S reg a 1 uh, if I do not enable individual interrupts like an ADC or a timer rollover or uh, pin change or interrupt external interrupt uh, whatever uh, it cannot activate any interrupts you have to en enable them individually if i is zero all interrupts will be disabled if i is one you must enable the other interrupts individually still good so uh, the interrupt control unit so in this interrupt control unit you will see depending on what you're using what you're working with each and every different peripheral makes use of this uh, interrupt control unit inside the microcontroller like for instance if you want to make use of timers it's got certain contra uh, um, sorry a certain uh, control registers if you want to uh, enable uh, port or pin changes you will go to other another type of set of registers etc if you want to do i square c or you are it's got their own different types of registers associated with that each and every different peripheral has got its own uh, registers to control this and you have to work on them individually right this is the register i'm talking about this is s reg we are focusing on this one but when we talk about um, in c language you will see uh, well, we can go and say S reg must bit number seven must be a one. That's one way of doing it, but it's not necessary. We are going to include uh, a header file by the name of interrupt.h. And if you just use um, the command or the statement SEI and then opening open bracket, closing bracket and semicolon, it will start or it will activate the specific I bit sitting in this S register. So, yeah. Um, but we'll do it in when we start doing programs you will see this is just this is done by a, sp a single statement inside a C program so let's talk about I want to focus in this video or this video and maybe videos that will follow on external interrupts and um, pin change interrupts that's what I want to focus on so external interrupts is if you if you look at this um, in other words just look at this one this is a control register for external interrupts as I've said each and every interrupt source has got its own register so uh, this one uh, external interrupt uh, masking bits so you've got a bit here int 0 and int 1 so you have to set these bits if I want to activate interrupt 0 I will make this bit a 1 that will th that will tell the device that interrupt 0 is now activated it if something happens on and as you can see int 0 is actually sitting on pd2 interrupt 0 is connected to pd2 interrupt 1 is connected to pd3 
So if certain conditions are true about this input on PD2, and this is a one, it's activated the external interrupt. So then you will be uh, again directed to an interrupt service routine. So yes, these two bits are basically determining that sort of your, uh, in a, if, you, if I compare it again with a house, in a house you've got a plug circuit. And if you want to switch on that plug circuit, you have to switch on a specific uh, selector on your main switch, main, main circuit board rather. The same happens here, even though, like in the previous case, um, this in S register I is set. If I want to activate external interrupt zero, I must also place a one in this specific bit, which is in zero bit, which is sitting in this external interrupt masking register. Um, so this is the first two that we're talking about. Now let me just give you an example of where I've used this in, in our courses quite a lot of times is when I connect, we connect sometimes a um, keypad to this to this microcontroller. And the microcontroller should be doing the main th main function. Maybe it's to read an ADC or to display the value then or so and so forth. But uh, I want to maybe connect a keypad. And as soon as a key is pressed, I want to be informed. I don't want to wait for this key to be pressed the whole time. Otherwise, this, this microcontroller would be a, a, a very uh, useless device if it's only waiting for this uh, key to be pressed. But um, by carrying on with the main program and using interrupt zero as soon as uh, a certain condition happens here, and I'll talk about the conditions just now, you will see that um, all of a sudden I can jump to the interrupt service routine, I can execute the in interrupt service routine, and then carry on with the main program inside this microcontroller. So this is how I actually switch on interrupt zero then, or interrupt one. So let's have a look. Next slide. So this is what I've said, the conditions. You can let this, um, you can tell this device if, if you look at the red, the red here, you can tell it if it's on the low level. In other words, the voltage level going into interrupt zero or interrupt one. If it's on the low level, you must be interrupted. You can tell it, but then if you look at, again, let's go back to the control registers. I've got your external interrupt control register A, and this ISC00 and 01 is associated with interrupt zero, and this ISC10 and 11 is associated with interrupt one. But again, uh, as you can see here, these X's are just referring to the one year or that zero there. So this, if you put zero zero there, let's say for interrupt zero, you put zero zero, you put zero zero here, then it will interrupt on the on the low level. And in actual fact, that is the default also. So if you do not do anything with this register, it will actually interrupt you on the low level. Personally, I do not like that because um, uh, it, if you, well, y you can use it like this. There's no, there's no, nothing that prevents you from doing it. You must just really realize that uh, if you if you test this level on uh, PD2 and it's zero, it will execute the interrupt service routine, which is fine. And when it goes out there, there's going to be another interrupt because it's still zero. So uh, as long as this thing is zero, you will execute the interrupt service routine, go to your main program and actually come back to this uh, interrupt service routine because it's low. So if, but if that is your, the way you want to do it, that is fine. You can also tell this thing, if it goes on the falling edge or the rising edge, if there's a falling or a rising edge, you must be interrupted. So you're not specifying which one, any one of, there's a change in, um, in status from high to low or low to high, you can be interrupted. In this one here, you can be interrupted on the falling edge, if this is what you want to put in one and zero into these two bits here, or if you put one one, you will be interrupted when it goes from low to high. So these. These three are edge detectors, edge detecting, but it depends on what edge we want to talk about. So yes, we can do that. We can, in other words, specify what interrupt zero status should be. Uh, in this specific case here, at the bottom here, this is the external interrupt control register A. And if you put a two in there, it's actually this one, one zero, and the interrupt is on the falling edge, which is that one, which is correct. 
again i'm gonna continue with the next video um, video number three on interrupts uh, just to keep the time limited to 12 minutes thank you